Okay, so this so far is mechanisms related to fiber, microbiome, short chain fatty acids, and how they can affect metabolism, energy balance. Yep. But mechanisms are one thing. What evidence do we have that all of this plays out in in humans? Yeah, let's put it to the test. We we don't want to just take mechanisms. That's not that's not the way we roll. We want to take real human research. And we're going to turn to uh, a famous NIH researcher named Kevin Hall. He does uh, met metabolism research, and he's um, very well known for these studies where he'll take a group of people, and they I'm not sure how much they're paid to do this, but they will get locked up in a essentially like uh, dormitory, and they will just eat the food that he's providing to them. Okay, so we call this a metabolic ward. And essentially, they're enrolling in a clinical study for more than a month, and they are served trays of food, and they are not allowed to bring in any outside snacks or anything like this, okay? So in this metabolic ward study that we're about to talk about that was published in Nature Medicine in February of 2021, um, they, uh, they did two weeks on a completely plant-based diet. And they did two weeks on a ketogenic diet, an animal-based ketogenic diet. Now, both of these diets were matched for protein intake. So protein was the same. Uh, it was the carbs and the fat that were different. So of course, the keto diet was high fat, low carb, and the plant-based diet was high carb, low fat. And there were, other, there were two other major differences between the groups. The, the plant-based diet was high in fiber. The keto diet was high in saturated fat. Now, with both of these, they were served food and then they were told, eat until you're full. Just keep eating until you're full. Okay, so they were not cut off. Right, ad lib. Ad lib. And, um, and everyone crossed over, so they were controlling for themselves. So each person got to do two weeks on each of these diets. And basically what we see is that, um, so I want to pull up uh, a, a figure here for everyone to take a look at. What we're looking at here is the body weight change that's taking place, being measured in kilograms, by the way. So each, bear in mind, each kilogram is 2.2 pounds. Just to be clear as well, you're talking about the folks that are tuning in on YouTube. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, you might need to flick over. Okay, and I'm gonna describe it so people can uh, also hear it through my voice. But if you're on YouTube, you can take a look and you might wanna pull up YouTube if you're just listening on the audio. Um, but basically what you see here on this first graph is that the red line is going to be the, the animal-based keto diet. And people are clearly losing more weight on the animal-based keto diet. Are you disappointed, Simon? No, because I know the results. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, so people did lose more weight on the ketogenic diet. But the question is, what kind of weight were they losing? Because there's this assumption that many times we jump to of, oh, I lost weight. That must be good. But what if, it's, what if you're losing the part that you don't want to lose? And so the next thing that we're going to take a look at is the fat-free mass and how much this was changing. Now, fat-free mass, fat-free mass. What is this? Muscle, Simon? water, bones. Exactly. Now, hopefully they're not losing bones. So basically <laughs> what they're losing here with this is muscle and water. And what you can see uh, is that with the red line that on the animal-based ketogenic diet, there is a significant decline in fat-free mass that takes place during the first week. So, you know, once again, like when you cut your carbs, um, you pee out and you look great in the mirror, but what you've lost is not fat, you've lost mm. water weight. Right, you've depleted glycogen and with that yeah. comes a lot of water that's lost. Yeah, and, and like, look, I mean, if I were uh, competing in a bodybuilding competition, that, that's what I would do in the last, you know, couple of days before the event, but nonetheless, so, the plant-based diet though, like you don't want to lose fat-free mass and the plant-based diet was maintaining its fat-free mass throughout the study. So that's a beautiful thing. What you did want to lose was fat. You want to lose fat mass, right? We want to burn fat. So we've been talking about this, you know, the second sort of thing that short-chain fatty acids do is they help us to consume the fat, metabolize it, get rid of it, get it out of our body. And guess what? That is exactly what we see on the high fiber plant-based diet. Over the course of two weeks, they lost uh, significantly more. You can see a separation between the lines. There's a significant decrease on the plant-based low-fat diet in terms of their fat loss, um, as opposed to the keto diet, which did lose some fat, but not nearly as much as you did with the plant-based diet. So they're, they're metabolizing their fat. Now, uh, this is really cool because it brings us back to the very first point about fiber and microbes, which is that they make us feel full. 
we achieved satiety. Right. So they measured how satisfied people were. They, they measured hunger, satisfaction, and fullness. And the two diets were exactly the same. Despite eating almost 700 calories less. This is the key. This is the key is in this last graph for those on YouTube, what you see here, the red line is the keto diet. The green line is the plant-based diet. And on the plant-based diet, every single day that they were on the plant-based diet, they consumed less calories on average, even though they achieved the exact same levels of hunger, satisfaction, and fullness. And when you average it out, it was about 700 calories less per day on the plant-based diet compared to the keto diet. And if you want to put them in the framework of like losing weight, 700 calories, that means in about five days, you're going to lose a pound. Wow. And just to be clear on the on the bodybuilding strategy for, for getting ready for a stage, I think that the protocol tends to be some calorie restriction, carb restriction going in, but then on the day, they often carbohydrate up to get that glucose to kind of flood back into the muscles and, and puff up. So just want to make that clear for your next bodybuilding comp. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have yet to enter a bodybuilding competition, but uh, I will you're, you're consult on your you way. next time. Right. Thank you. Uh, so let me play devil's advocate. That's, that's a two week study, right? Yeah. Um, how do we know if that continues to kind of play out over the long term, or if there's some type of adaptation process and then, you know, the, the difference in calorie consumption starts to even out. Sure, we can we can take a look at um, randomized controlled trials. Randomized controlled trials where people increase their fiber intake have clearly demonstrated. Uh, this is, by the way, from Andrew Reynolds in the Lancet, twenty nineteen, have clearly demonstrated that people lose weight when they increase their fiber consumption. Um, there's also uh, um, uh, waist circumference data that shows that fiber consumption achieves a, a, a lower waist circumference. Um, and there's also fat, uh, fat, um, uh, loss data that have, uh, been shown as well. So, but, and those are the randomized control trials. The other thing that we could look at is, um, long-term population-based data. So one of the areas where we often will take a look are the Adventist two studies. So in, in the Adventist two studies, they were studying the seventh day Adventists. And this is a unique population because, um, due to their sort of community and religious practices, they uh, are far more likely to be vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian than you'll find in traditional American society. So you actually get an opportunity to take a look and see what these kind of unique groups are doing. And what you find in, within these, this population is that there's only one group, Simon, that has an average body mass index that is less than 25. Those are the vegans. And the other groups, if you were to order them from lowest body mass index up to highest, it would start with vegan and then vegetarian and then pescatarian and then omnivore. Right. And so that would be an inverse relationship with fiber intake. So the body mass index was inversely correlated with fiber intake, meaning that the highest fiber intake was in the vegans. Second highest fiber intake was vegetarians. Third highest was the pescatarians. Mm -hmm.